welcome to day two of our virtual 15th annual Durham Black History Month celebration, produced by Cultural Expressions Art Gallery, Inc. I'm your host, Charles Duncan Waterman, and it was such a joy to witness all those amazing entertaining performances yesterday. Today, you are about to expand your knowledge of Black history. We're broadcasting through Rogers TV and Facebook Live, as well as the Durham Black History Month's website, and be sure to connect with us live on social media. Please join me in welcoming Sandra Whiting and Keisha Christie, who will deliver the First Nation land acknowledgement. As people of African descent, we offer this land recognition in solidarity with the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island in the efforts and deliberate intention towards decolonization. We acknowledge the land of Turtle Island that was never meant to be owned. We recognize that most of the land that was entrusted to the indigenous peoples was in some cases shared by choice, but all too often taken by force. We recognize the historical colonialism and the ongoing colonialism that has led to the present day situation where land acknowledgements are offered in place of land. As people of African descent, many of us have come here by choice, while many are here as a result of historical force. We acknowledge the complexities where we were promised land that was never given by those whose it never was to give. As people of African descent, we acknowledge the land of Turtle Island that sustains us, express deep gratitude to its indigenous peoples and pledge to honor our dignity and divinity that ultimately connects us all. As people of African descent, we offer this land acknowledgement in solidarity with the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island in the efforts and deliberate intentions toward decolonization. As people of African descent, we acknowledge the land of Turtle Island that sustains us, express the gratitude to its indigenous peoples and pledge to honor our dignity and divinity that ultimately connects us all. Thank you, Sandra and Keisha. Ladies and gentlemen, Chair of the Durham Black History Month celebration, Esther Ford. Welcome everyone. Welcome to day two of 15th Durham Black History Month celebration. We have an amazing day two lined up for you. So sit back and enjoy. Let us stand and sing Canada's national anthem Marcia Brackett as she leads the Black National Anthem. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. 
ring with the harmonies of liberty let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies let it resound loud as a rolling sea sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us facing the rising sun another day begun let us march on till victory is won Regional Chair and CEO John Henry brings greetings on behalf of all the communities of the Durham region Hi, I'm John Henry, Chair of Durham Region. It is my honor to welcome you all to the 15th annual Durham Black History Month celebration, simply themed as 15th. This year's virtual event is presented by Cultural Expressions Art Gallery, Inc. in partnership with the Durham Children's Aid Foundation, the Town of Ajax, City of Pickering, and the Congress of Black Women, among others. Tonight, we will take a look back at the memorable and monumentous events that continue to shape the tone and direction of diversity across Canada and Durham region in the past 15 years. As always, we hope you will enjoy the many talented performers, virtual learning opportunities, engaging games, and overall inspiration of this evening. Enjoy the event and please enjoy an enlightened and educational Black History Month. Black Star Spoken Word Team started as a student group at Notre Dame Catholic School here in Ajax. They stay together after graduation to continue sharing their craft. Pay close attention to the message they bring. Welcome, Black Star. Can you hear my ancestors song? Listen. Can you hear my people sing? Listen. Do you hear them calling out to you to look within, to continue to defy the false claim thought to be true? Remember your history and embrace your inheritance. Connect to Papa Kimbangu, for that is where your strength is. We are the living proof. It may not look like it, but I'm pouring my emotion into every single piece. Because with every justice for, I fear that one day it may be me. It may not look like it, but I'm sitting in silence, surrounded by screams. But there is wisdom in knowing when to and when not to speak. We are the living proof. It is the miseducation, not the uneducation. Living proof. 
help me welcome Julian Taylor. Don't stop believing in yourself. I know you. You've been through some hard times, but you made it through. Never give up on your dreams in life. Keep up the fight. Some people that be cruel to you. Just keep your cool. Cool. Can I get oh just a little bit? No, don't stop right now. I need a little bit more. Can I get oh just a little bit? No, don't stop right now. I need a little bit more. Can I get oh just a little bit? No, don't stop right now. I need a little bit more. Can I get oh just a little bit? No, don't stop right now. I need a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Oh, oh, oh. Just a little bit more When you feel far away from home You're not alone Everyone needs a good place And a good space To call their own Don't you ever let anyone Stand in your way got skills they've never seen before Don't go astray Can I get oh just a little bit no don't stop that now I need a little bit more Can I get oh just a little bit no don't stop that now I need a little bit more Can I get oh just a little bit no don't stop that now I need a little bit more Can I get oh just a little bit no don't stop that now I need a little bit more Just a little bit more Just a little bit more oh, 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 oh. Just a little bit more Can I get oh just a little bit no oh, don't stop that I need a little bit more Can I get oh just a little bit no oh, don't stop that I need a little bit more Can I get oh just a little bit no oh, don't stop that I need a little bit more Can I get oh just a little bit no oh, don't stop Welcome, Jillian. Hello. You've had a strong, long history in the Toronto area, across Canada, as a uh, musician. Twenty years, from what I understand, if not more. A little bit more than twenty years. Yeah, now. you and I, you and I have known each other a lot longer than that. You've known me my entire life, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. Um, I know you come from a musical family with a history, not just in the Caribbean, but also in Canada. Tell us a little bit about the influence that the family has brought to you. Oh, sure. I mean, the, the first influence would probably be my father because he's a great piano player, mm -hmm. uh, exceptionally gifted, and um, would play at home and certainly would play organ in the choir at church and things like that. And one of the things that I resonated with me was I always knew that my father was home because the first thing he would do was sit at the piano. Mm -hmm. And even if I was, you know, trying to fake sleep upstairs in my bedroom and I heard the door open and the piano would start going, it, it, it was a, a great sense of um, belonging and home, I think, for me. And I, I learned how to play the piano at a very young age as well. Um, and relearning it again, because I've, I've, I've forgotten some of it and my daughter's now taking piano lessons. And so now I'm getting more involved in that. But 
ended up gravitating to the guitar. I mean, my grandfather Ira plays piano and guitar, and, and acoustic guitar just seemed to be the, the, the instrument that called me. Um, I guess you can bring it to a campfire and you can't bring a piano there. So, And you know a lot about campfires. You know a lot about Canada, the Canadian history. The, I do. Your African and your uh, Indigenous history, if you will. Sure. Uh, First Nations, um, and my mom's family is from uh, Ganawage, um, and she has family here in Toronto as well. Um, and uh, certainly my father's family uh, was scattered across the Caribbean because my, my grandfather uh, was a pastor, and we know at different parishes across the uh, West Indies. So we have a, a very rich history, uh, and we're very mixed. We're, we're, we're mongrels, as I like to call it. But um, in my upbringing, um, I was very fortunate to, and I still have one grandparent left. I returned 100, but I was very Amazing. close. To, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Uh, I was very close to all of my grandparents, and I, I had all of them up until, I guess, maybe about well, just under a decade. Um, and so the upbringing that I had from my mom, mom's father, John, uh, he really helped school me in, 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 in the First Nations and, and, and Indigenous way of, of thinking and, and, and spirituality, while obviously, you know, my grandparents here in Toronto... Um, also instilled that in, in a different sort of light. And so what I've come to understand, um, you know, a, a very simple example is, is, the, is the, the power of love and that oneness. And mm. I believe that it stretches across all religions and all sort of spiritual thinking. Your uh, amazing talent, two Juno nominations, <laughs> uh, you know, a, a band called Staggered Crossing that... Uh, are they making a comeback or? Is... No, we, we had our 20th anniversary of our first record last year and so decided to release one song and some old cuts from the past on, mm -hmm. on that record. Um, but yeah, no, <laughs> there's no comeback at all there's right no, now. There's no comeback. I can't even get on, 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 onto a stage really uh, with an audience at the moment, but that'll change. Yeah, but you're now focusing on a solo career and uh, Tell us about The Ridge and what the album The Ridge means to you and, you know, the, the accolades that came with the, the Ridge, including the two Juno mm -hmm. nominations. I was pretty shocked by that. I mean, after being in this industry for about 20 years and never having uh, those kind of accolades, like it was nominated for two Junos. I always say I was making up for lost time, you know, 10 years for, for each nomination. And... Um, it was long listed for the Polaris Prize. It was nominated for like eight awards. Um, and I just really not sure what to make of all that because I felt like it was something that I was always doing. Uh, however, I guess it, it came across and, and resonated with people differently. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps it was the time it was released. It was released uh, near the beginning of the first lockdown. And maybe people had time to listen to it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But... I really concentrated on the lyrics, and I've been concentrating on lyrics for quite some time, obviously, uh, and tried to, to write from a heart and tried to write things that I know and, and, and stories about my life and mantras that I'm uh, interested in and, and, and believe in. And I, I mean, it's kind of a daunting task to, to write the next record, but um, yeah, I mean, The Ridge lives in the hearts of many, and I'm really grateful for that, and I hope that I can continue... Uh, putting out quality work like that. That's that's the bar, and, and you always try to set the bar and, and try to raise the bar until you're gone. Yeah. At least I get to leave things behind for people to listen to when I'm gone. Well, you know, that's that's great. You know, your last uh, song, Wide Awake, as I call it. And <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it speaks a lot about the personal influence of the people in your life. Obviously, your mom, dad, mm -hmm. um, uh, including your daughter. So, you know, there's there's a lot of you in not just that particular song, but The Ridge. What's so different about Jillian now that, uh, the, and, and what's brought out, what has brought out some of the amazing songs that are in The Ridge? Hmm. I think that it happens to just be a life lived so far. Um, the Ridge came about when a lot of people passed away in my life. Like a lot of, like my grandparents included mm -hmm. um, my aunts, 
all passed away within a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. And that kind of reflection was something that um, stuck with me and has stuck with me about life and just generally speaking about who I am and who the people are around me and how I came to be uh, seems to be the story that needs to be told. Like people think about, I think people overthink things sometimes. I, I certainly do myself, but I realized at some point in time, I can relay a story about going, like walking down my street. Like even if it was walking down my street with say my father or we were walking with the dog, it sounds like a simple mundane story, but it's not. It's the story of everybody's life. Mm -hmm. And I found that at one point in time, I was able to just talk about what I was living rather than pretend what I was living. Mm -hmm. Like I have um, a lyric in a song and, and it, it really just talks about a, a delicatessen on, on Eglinton Street, on Eglinton Ave, sorry, and uh, where I used to meet my Aunt Roberta for lunch. Of course. And I think that resonates with people. Avenue Road and Eglinton. Yeah, and I think it resonates with mm -hmm. people. It resonates with me. I talk about the simple joys of jumping in puddles. And I think when I had my daughter, I had forgotten what jumping in a puddle and how much fun that actually was. And then when I had her and saw her doing it, everything sort of rushed back into my mind and my heart. And I'm like, oh my goodness, the simple stories are the easiest ones and the ones we need to tell. Yeah. So this is the 15th anniversary of Durham Black History Month. And, you know, part of what we've focused on is our past. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a clear and present time that we're in. And then there's a future. And a lot of your songs reflect maybe a combination of that. Uh, I liked, you know, where you were going with your last thought that um, maybe just jumping in the puddle is about being in the present. Mm -hmm. um, but you're an amazing storyteller. And as we wrap up, maybe speak about what's in the future for Julian. Sure. Um, I know that uh, I would like to get back on stages with audiences. That's mm -hmm. something that um, has really broken my heart and that's broken a lot of people's hearts. I think that part of who I really am is doing that and, mm -hmm. and not being able to do that has, has been uh, taxing on my mental uh, state of mind. Um, so I hope to really get back to that soon and, and be able to shake people's hands and hug them and smile. And mm -hmm. th th that's big. Huge. Um, so that's what I would like to see uh, in my future and the future for everybody. I'd like to continue um, advocating for um, black rights and indigenous rights and, and the rights of people who are marginalized. I would like to use my work as, as, a, as a gift from uh, God. And when I mean that, I mean the Great Spirit uh, doesn't make any mistakes. Mm. And so I'd like to talk about the journey that I've had uh, and share that with people so that one day um, they can go back and, and say that was, that was a, a life well lived. That's my hope. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Julian Taylor. Please welcome back Sandra Whiting to introduce you to some important figures in black history. Did you know? My name is Sandra Whiting and I am a storyteller. And I'm so delighted to be part of this program to give you a little bit more information. Did you know? And first we're going to start with this wonderful trailblazer, pre-1964 Civil Rights Act. 1946, Viola Desmond, an African-Canadian businesswoman who challenged the practice of racial segregation at a film theater in New Glasgow. In 2010, she was granted a posthumous pardon, the first to be granted in Canada. And she is the first woman, apart from the Queen of England, to be on any currency in Canada, the $10 bill. 
Viola Desmond. Did you know 17th century Matthew da Costa? He is the first recorded black man in Canada who was known to speak and translate approximately five languages. He was a translator interpreter for European explorers who wanted to communicate with Aboriginal peoples. In 2017, Canada issued a series of stamps to commemorate Matthew de Costa's unique contributions to Canadian society. Did you know in 1791, Toussaint Louverture, who was a self-educated enslaved man, led Haiti to independence, which inspired millions of enslaved and free people of African descent to seek freedom and equality throughout the Atlantic world. Toussaint Louverture. Did you know 1830 to 1878, Robert Sutherland, the first African Canadian university student graduate and Canada's first African Canadian lawyer called to the bar of Canada West in 1855. Robert Sutherland. Did you know 1837 to 1913, Dr. Anderson Ruffin Abbott, Canada's first licensed physician. Have you ever stopped to consider the contributions of our black inventors? Sit back and let Keisha Christie tell you a story. There are so many things that we use in our lives that make it easier. But have you ever wondered how these things came about? Have you ever wondered what the world would be like if there were no black people in it? Well, this is a story about a young man named Michael. Michael asked a lot of questions. And Michael thought about all kinds of things. He sat on his bed one morning, looking at his mom, and he thought to himself, what would I do without my mother? And then he asked her a question. He said, mom, what would the world be like if there were no black people in the world? Hmm, this was a good question. And Michael asked a lot of good questions. So his mother thought about it for a moment. And she said, you know, how about you join me for the day and let's see what the world would be like if there were no black people in it. But first, you need to get your clothes on so that we can get the day started. Michael jumped out of his bed, ran to his closet and pulled out his clothes and started to get dressed. He put on his shirt, his pants and rushed out into the living room. His mother took one look at him and said, Michael, you can't go anywhere looking like that. Your clothes are all wrinkled. And where are your shoes? Michael, let's start again. Take off those clothes. I will iron them for you. And you go sort out your shoes. There were no shoes. Michael's mother reached for the ironing board, but the ironing board wasn't there. Sarah Boone invented the ironing board. As for Michael's shoes, there were none because Jan E. Metzlinger invented the lacing machine. The lacing machine is not about shoelaces. It's the machine that connects the top of the shoe to the sole of the shoe. So without the machine, there were no shoes. Oh, Michael's mother looked at Michael, examining him up and down. And she said, you know what, Michael? You have to do something with that hair. Michael ran back to his room to grab his comb, but the comb wasn't there. He looked high and low, under his bed, on the dresser. There was no comb. The comb was invented by Walter Sammons. No comb. Michael decided, forget the comb. He's going to brush his hair. He went looking in the same places he had looked for his comb, but there was no brush. He looked in places he hadn't looked for before, and there was still no brush. Hmm, he thought to himself, where could his brush be? Well, 
Lydia O. Newman invented the brush. Without her invention, there is no brush. Michael went back out into the living room and said, Mom, I can't find it. No comb, no brush, wrinkled clothes, no shoes. It was a sight. And Michael's mom, she wasn't looking too polished either because without her hair products, hmm. Madam C.J. Walker invented the hair products that women use today. So without those, his mom wasn't looking as polished as she usually did. No worries. Michael's mom always saw the bright side of everything. She said, Michael, let's finish our chores and then go to the grocery store. Well, that's what they did. Michael's mother continued to wash the clothes. Michael grabbed a broom and he started sweeping and sweeping and sweeping. When he was done, there was a big pile of dirt in the middle of the floor. So he went to reach for the dustpan. There's no dustpan. Michael called out, Mom, have you seen the dustpan? No. He looked a little bit more, but there was no dustpan to be found. Lloyd P. Ray invented the dustpan. Hmm. No worries. Michael swept all the dirt into a corner and got the mop. Mopping was his favorite thing to do. He could sail across the floor, but there was no mop. Michael looked in all the places where the mop was supposed to be kept, but there was no mop. That's when he realized that the mop was invented by Thomas W. Stewart. No mop. Michael was getting frustrated. He said, Mom, I'm not having any luck today. Like I said, Michael's mom is always looking on the bright side of things. No worries. As soon as I finish these clothes, we'll make a list and go to the grocery store. Can you grab the paper and pen for me? Well, Michael went off to grab a paper and pen. Michael's mom finished the clothes. When she looked for the dryer, there was no dryer. She thought that was odd, but the dryer was invented by George T. Salmon. So without him, no dryer, and clothes will be have to be hung out on the line. When she finished hanging the clothes, she came back in looking for Michael. Michael had the paper, but the pencil that he had, the lead was broken. And he didn't know how to sharpen it. The sharpener was not there. He looked high and low. He said, Mom, I can't find the sharpener. And that's because the sharpener was invented by Hon Love. Without him, there's no pencil sharpener. No worries, Michael. We'll use my fountain pen. There was no fountain pen because that was invented by William Purvis. That was no worries. Michael and his mom decided they were gonna to go to the grocery store anyways. They were gonna drive their car. When they left the house to get into the car, the car didn't work. Hmm, they looked around and there were other cars moving, but their car didn't work. Hmm, when they thought more about it, they realized that Richard Spikes was the inventor of the automatic gear shift. And without that, it's a little bit difficult to direct their car. And not only that, it was Joseph Gamble who invented the supercharged system that helps the engine to go and go quickly. So without those two inventions, their car wouldn't move. They decided to walk to the grocery store instead. On their walk, they noticed that a lot of the cars that were moving didn't know which way to go. There were so many accidents. Well, that's because there were no traffic lights. The traffic lights were invented by Garrett A. Morgan. So without the traffic lights, no one knew which way to go. Wow, what a day this has been. They made it to the grocery store and picked up all that they needed, headed back home. It was a really nice walk. When they got home, they took out the eggs, the milk, the butter, but they couldn't put it in the refrigerator because it was gone. There was no refrigerator. The refrigerator was invented by John Standard. So they had to leave all of their groceries on the counter. This day was getting rougher by the minute. Michael and his mom sat down at the table, trying to think of what to do next. It was getting close to the time when Michael's father would come home from work. So they sat but Michael started to feel cold and asked his mom to turn up the heat. So his mom got up from the table and went to turn up the heat, but nothing happened. She tried again, still nothing happened. Alice Parker, a black woman invented 
the heating furnace. So without that, there was no heat. And then they started to wonder, if it was summertime and really hot, would they be able to use the air conditioner? No, the air conditioner was invented by Frederick Jones. Without him, there's no air conditioning. Wow, they sat at the table and waited. Well, it was time for Michael's father to come home from work, and he worked downtown in a very tall office building, more than 20 floors high. Well, at the end of the day, Michael's father takes the mail and he heads home. But on this day, there was no elevator. You see, the elevator is a modern invention, but the early elevators were invented by a man named Alexander Mills. So without the elevator, Michael's father had to take the stairs. Down he came, making it to the bottom floor. Michael's father looked out to see if the bus was coming, because that is how he traveled home every evening. But the bus is a modern invention to something that was invented many, many years ago. The electric trolley was invented by Albert R. Robinson. And that is how we got our modern buses. Without that invention, there was no bus and Michael's father had to walk home. But before he does that, he delivers the mail from his office. And when he went to look for the mailbox, there was no mailbox. That was invented by Philip Downing. And the mail goes through a machine that adds the postmark to tell where to go. And that machine was invented by William Berry. So without those two things, the mail can't travel across the country. Well, Michael and his mother were at home sitting at the kitchen table in the dark. By the time Michael's father came home, he found them sitting there and wondered, why are you guys sitting in the dark? Well, they come to think about it. The light couldn't work without a very important piece. The filament inside the light bulb was invented by Lewis Howard Latimer. Without that little piece, that tiny invention, the light bulb couldn't work. Well, Michael's family realized exactly how difficult it is if there were no Black people in the world. They sat together and wondered, hmm, is there more that they should think about? Well, they were lucky. Today was a good day. But what if there was an emergency? And if there was and someone needed blood, they would not be able to get it. Charles Drew invented a way to preserve blood, which led to the very first blood bank in the world. So without his invention, that means that in a difficult situation, many people would not have their lives extended. Thinking about it now, there are a lot of inventions that were done by Black people. And without them, what would we do today? We have to remember this. People are like stained glass windows. When the sun is shining, they are so beautiful. But when darkness sets in, their true beauty is revealed if there is light on the inside. So don't take advantage of all the things that we do today. Remember, it took someone some important person to invent that one thing. And now we know what the world would be like if there were no black people in the world. Wow, did you know all that? That's amazing. Listen, I don't know how I would make it through the day without some of these black inventors. So I tell you, thank you so much, Keisha, for telling us about this and introducing us to these awesome black inventors. Now here's Sandra Whiting with some more did you know? Another trailblazer, pre-1964 Civil Rights Act. Did you know about Carter G. Woodson, 1875 to 1950? He's known as the father of Black history. And in February 96, he launched the celebration of Negro History Week which is now known as Black History Month. Trailblazers, 21st century, accomplishments within the last 17 years. Did you know 
that in 2007, the Honorable Dr. Jean Augustine was the first African-Canadian female member of parliament and cabinet minister of government of Ontario, 1993, and was appointed as the first fairness commissioner for the province of Ontario. And in 2009, appointed as a member of the Order of Canada for her extensive contributions to Canadian society, including having February formally recognized in Canada as Black History Month. Another trailblazer, pre-1964 Civil Rights Act in the United States. Did you know Charles Richard Drew, 1875 to 1950? He's known as the father of blood banks. He was an American surgeon and medical researcher. He researched blood transfusions and developed improved techniques for blood storage. He applied his expert knowledge to develop large scale blood banks early in World War II, helping medics to save thousands of lives of the Allied forces. Charles Richard Drew. And continuing with the pre-1964 trailblazers, did you know about Henrietta Lacks, 1920 to 1951? She was an African-American woman whose cancer cells are the source of the HeLa cell line, the first immortalized human cell line and one of the most important cell lines in medical research. Wow, did you know that? That was some good information. Listen, I tell you, if you want to find out more information about all of these historic figures in our Black community and in our Black history, in, in essence, visit our YouTube channel, all right? Thank you so much, Sandra, for that wonderful presentation. Help me welcome vocalist, acoustic guitarist, and storyteller, Kunle. Hello, this is Kunle here. I'm a singer-songwriter, you know, musician, and uh, producer, multi-instrumentalist, whatever. Um, and I'm happy to be playing uh, for the Durham uh, Black History Month. And you guys stick around and let's have some fun together. What do you think? Woke up this morning feeling so nice I wonder how, I wonder why too It's been a while I felt like these My mother told me what we did last night da -da 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 -da. Na, 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 na. I woke up this morning feeling so nice I wonder how, I wonder why too It's been a while I felt like this My brother told me what we did last night We were out in the pool the coolest time of the night Playing hide and seek Singing midnight song The moon is up above It's staring at me tonight Let's make a night to remember Kekashire Allah The moon is up above in the sky Kekashire Allah Kashiri, I let the moon is up above in the sky. Kashiri, I let to 
り、ばば、みよれて、いや、みよれて、いみみこにもれて。ばば、みよれて、いや、みよれて、いみみこにもれて。Did I say I was from Nigeria earlier? Yeah. That song that I just played、uh, was a song that、uh, I remembered,、um, you know, my upbringing, you know, playing in the, you know, we didn't really have、uh, video games、uh, back on when I grew up. As at the time I was growing up, video games wasn't, it wasn't really a thing. And、um, songs like this w a s what、uh, we started with. So, going back, you know, fast forward to now, I just thought about it like, ah,、oh, it was a good time. And I think you can feel it from the song. Anyways, how about we play together on the next one? This particular song is titled Maintain Your Lane. Sometimes in life, we tend to、uh, look at what other people do to judge our. Our own success or to measure our success. And、uh, this is me just, you know, giving myself a reminder that, you know, your lane is different from other people's lane. Do your thing, let them do theirs. And they do theirs, you do your thing. So we're going to sing this one together. Some to crawl, let your light shine, let it guide you through the dark. If you believe in what I am saying, raise your hand. Everybody sing to do 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 Through a little bit of、uh, a jam session together. The fact that you're watching me from home doesn't mean I can't engage you in some little jam session. Anyone who knows me knows I love doing this. <laughs> Are you ready? So, this is a 5 4 rhythm. So, you give me a clap, whatever you have in your hand, your spoon, 
your fork, your spatula, your plates, your glass, whatever. Body percussion, whatever you get. So let's do. One, two, three, one, two, da, 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 da. Okay, if you can sing One more time Let's do it together Everybody sing Love your vibes, brother. Thanks, Kunle. Eleanor is a pioneer in, in more ways than one. I'm, if you talk to her about her family history, you know that they were free people who came up from the United States and uh, came to Canada to homestead uh, land that was being offered. So she comes from pioneers, people who launch out into the unknown and face it with courage and all their strength. Chasing dreams and placing bets when the Collins family moved from Alberta to British Columbia, the white neighborhood they moved into raised a petition to prevent this black family from moving in. But she decided she wanted to help the neighbors understand who they were as people. She volunteered at the local school, taught music, and began to break down the many barriers. You know, she wasn't afraid to put herself out there as a performer and as a band singer, as a radio singer, TV personality, theatrical singer with her work with Theatre Under the Stars and also in church singing because she had that background in gospel music as well that she was so versatile and embodied so many different genres and styles of music that all came out as 100% Eleanor Collins. For her to have her own television show, The Allen Her Show, named for her, is a remarkable and, and phenomenal act. And so that alone, I think, is again another moment of singularity for her. And it defied the stereotypes. Ever since I first met her in 2009, I cannot believe that Every Canadian hasn't heard of Eleanor Collins. That's how well known she should be in our country. She should be a national icon. We know the names of that first lineup of performers. We know them by their first names, like Ella Fitzgerald, Billy Holiday, Lena Horn. And I think we in this country, Canada, need to know Eleanor Collins because she is in that first lineup. Eleanor Collins, you never cease to amaze us with your quality and success. You are such an inspiration. You have worked hard for this moment and we couldn't be more proud of you. For life, for love. So, here's to life. Willow, weep for me. Willow, weep for me. Bend your branches green along the stream that runs to sea. Listen to my plea. Listen.
Senator Donald Oliver was a member of the Senate of Canada for 22 years before he retired. He was the first Black Canadian male to be appointed to this position. Even though Donald Oliver retired from his position as Senator back in 2013, he has made astounding contributions to the welfare of Canada and the Black community. Along with his position at Senate, Senator Donald Oliver was also a founding member of the Black United Front and President for the Society for the Protection and Preservation of Black Culture in Nova Scotia. Senator Donald Oliver has shown immense dedication for his work, and throughout his career, Senator Donald Oliver has actively taken part in his community work. For this community work, he has been awarded five honors and awards for his achievements throughout his career. Thank you so much for helping us to mark our 15th anniversary. Every year, you, our supporters, help to make this event the biggest Black History Month celebration in Durham Region. Thank you to our host, Charles Duncan Waterman, to our performers, Pan Fantasy, Kunle, Sandra Whiting, Keisha Christie, Afiri Groove, Black Star Spoken Word Team, and Marcia Brackett. Thanks to Ruhan McLeish and the Mango Production Team for making this virtual event possible and for us to be able to gather here today. Thank you to our partners, Alexicon, Town of Ajax, City of Pickering, Durham Children's Aid Foundation, Converse of Black Women, and the Durham Black Coalition. And we're so grateful for our sponsors, the Durham Regional Police Services Board, Rotary Club of Pickering, Durham District School Board, Durham Region, and the Rotary Club of Ajax. Special thanks to our planning committee who pulled it off again this year, and this time for our first two-day event. And again, thank you all. Make sure to check out all the upcoming events across the region, and we look forward to seeing you again next year in 2023. Thank you so much for those two days of fun and excitement. Listen, I don't know about you, but I learned a whole lot as well. Join us on our social media platforms to follow us and just keep up to date as to what we're doing and what's going on. Don't forget that because Black history is not just for February, it's all year long. So join us again this time next year, where hopefully we can meet in person and really do this in person, right? So until then, God bless you. Charles Duncan Waterman, all the best. Bye-bye.